Now what about non-metals? Because we see a lot of non-metal compounds all the time. So an example of this would be CO2. That's a non-metal compound. Neither of them are metals. So how do we name that? Well, similar sort of general step. If you look at a periodic table, the substance with that is furthest to the left is listed first. Okay. So in this case, CO2. Which one of these is furthest left on the periodic table? If you look it up, you'll see it's C, and carbon. So we call. So we say the first part is carbon. Then the other part has the ide suffix applied to it, same thing. This part has the ide suffix and a multiplier at the front depending on the number. So the multiplier can be mono, meaning one, di, two, tri, um, tetra, going on till, you know, whatever. So two of them means di, so it's carbon, di, ox, ide, right? So, Carbon is the first thing that we write. Then we put the number of the other element, which is di. Then we put the first syllable of the other element, which is ox. And then we add ide. And now we have the final chemical that we're all familiar with, carbon dioxide, right? And that's how we go about naming any non-metal compound, okay? It's carbon dioxide, there it is. So what is the difference between an empirical and molecular formula? And give one example of when they can produce different formula for the same compound, okay? An empirical formula gives you the simplest ratio of chemicals within a compound, okay? So the simplest, the lowest numbers um, that still maintain the ratio of elements, okay? A molecular formula gives you the exact number of each element within a compound. The, so if there's two carbons, it'll say there are two carbons, okay? So ethene has the molecular formula C2H4. I brought that up earlier. That's the molecular formula. However, the empirical formula would simply be C1H2 because you can divide each of these by two and get one and two, you see. So this is the simplest ratio. For every one carbon, there are two hydrogens. And you can see that here, for every one carbon, there are two hydrogens. So it does present the same information, just in a different way. Now, a question that I got asked once um, recently was what would you need to turn, what would you need to know about the chemical to convert an empirical formula to a molecular formula? So what do we need to know about the chemical in order to convert between empirical and molecular formulas? And all you need to know is the molar mass. So, you know, in on your periodic table, it has the molar masses of each of your elements. So the molar mass of the chemical is just the sum of all of its parts. So if it's CO2, it would just be the molar mass of carbon plus the molar mass of oxygen plus the molar mass of oxygen. So all you need to know about the chemical in order to change between empirical and molecular formula is the molar mass of the chemical. 